to start rolling and we'll just start talking. Well, Jerry, what we're what we're interested in is the history of the place. Um, so we can start out with the earliest history. Can you tell us about the the building and, and then when the, the bar was? The built? building is uh, eighteen ninety three, I think. Uh, my 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 father in law opened it up as the bar on the 4th of July, 1933. I took it over in uh, 58 and been running it ever since. What kind of, what kind of bar was it when he, when he opened it in 33? Was it Just a uh, uh, shot and beer. Yeah. Did they have live music back then also? Yeah. Was it jazz? Yeah, they had a, not jazz, they had uh, just country, uh, uh, Mexican mariachis and... Uh, Back in 33? Yeah. They had the mariachis and uh, different uh, guys coming in singing western and whatever they could. Whatever they could find? Where did the name come from? Uh, my father-in-law uh, named it and uh, he was gone to the bank and all the down here was all uh, wetbacks and he was uh, they'd come in and give him their check and that and one a uh, money order mm -hmm. so he'd go to the bank and uh, get the money orders mm -hmm. and give them to him and they start calling him Mr. Chapultepec because he would send the money to uh, Chapultepec, Mexico. So he changed the name from Tony's to Chapultepec. Wow, that explains that. Yeah. Have you always served Mexican food here? Yes. Yeah. And when did when did you start bringing jazz into the place? I brought jazz in in 1958. One of the first ones was uh, uh, the middle one there, mm -hmm. Buddy DeFranco. Mm -hmm. He came to, he was coming to DU to do a, a clinic out there. So I called him and asked him if he wanted to play, and he came and, and used the house band with him. I always used the, uh, the same band, house band, mm -hmm. with everybody that came in. Oh, okay. But he was three. Mm -hmm. And then you've had, you've had a lot more since then. Oh, everyone, everybody on the wall, mm -hmm. every picture on the wall. And a hell of a lot more. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Bill Clinton. But yeah, Bill's up there. Uh -huh. He played here. In '91. '91. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. How was Bill playing on the saxophone? Was he good? He's good. good. And besides that, he brought his own crowd. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> and um, so, and I got to ask about Kerouac. Jack Kerouac used to hang out here, right? Yeah, he used to sit in that first booth. Uh huh. Uh, stay uh, and go next door. There was a parking lot where the lot is now. Mm -hmm. There was old cars in there, and they used to go over there and get uh, drunk in in the lot. And then come in here. Yeah. Then they went. They'd go from here over to. Uh, 17th the, to the Wazi, mm -hmm. and then they'd go down to the Pioneer that was down on Larmer, buy their drugs, mm -hmm. uh, come in and uh, sit here and get high. <laughs> Did they ever spend any money? <laughs> or they just sit here and listen to music? Nah, they never sped that, they never had that much. Afterwards, they did. Right. After uh, Kerouac left and uh, Kelly, I think, what the hell was his name? 
Cassidy? Cassidy. Mm -hmm. yeah, come, his dad had a barber shop up on uh, Copax and Steel. Mm -hmm. And they would get money and come down. They they, they spend money. Mm -hmm. Carolina Blooding Town. Yeah. I thought he was a bum. Then he goes back to New York and becomes a famous writer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, who would you say was the most famous person to ever play the stage here? Uh, Sinatra. Really? When was that? Uh, in 86. Uh -huh. He came in, he was doing, uh, playing uh, at the. Uh, what the hell they call the the stadium that that time? Mile high? No, the uh, not the Pepsi Center. <laughs> Pepsi, well, well, before the Pepsi, they had the Coliseum. Coliseum. Uh, the there. He was playing there, and then after he finished there, he came over here. Wow. The whole band. We had a double deck bus. Uh, oh. Stu Jackson owned it. And we would get the, the double deck bus and load them all up in there and go around playing to different places. Oh, wow. And then they took them out to the airport. But, but Ella Fitzgerald, she came, she was parked in the limousine outside the back door here. Mm -hmm. Just to listen? Just to uh, listen to the music. She didn't want to. Uh, she was kind of afraid to come in <laughs> because at that time you had every you had everything you had Indians, winos, uh, limousines, <laughs> everything in here. It was, it was the United Nations. Right. <laughs> and when was, that was in the eighties, also. Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, U2, I throw them out. They were playing at the, 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 the Pepsi Center. Uh -huh. They came in there with a couple of young girls was uh, old enough to be their daughters. I told them, hey, come on. To, uh, take these two bimbos and you two get out. <laughs> <laughs> and they did, uh, came in and they paper. Did you uh, kick them out? And yeah. I kicked them out. Oh, that's great. They went up on 17th to another bar. The next week the cops closed it up. Really? For serving minors. Oh, man. Nice. Yeah. Did you ever, did it ever get kind of, in the early days, did it ever get kind of rough in here? No. No? I never, I never seemed to get rough. I could stand on that side of the bar and knock you out <laughs> over here. <laughs> now back in the day, you could hop over the bar. Right. <laughs> yeah. I heard a story, you used to keep a shotgun and a bat back here just in case. Well, oh, I, we still got our bat. <laughs> <laughs> no shotgun, no more. <laughs> no more shotguns. <laughs> they frown on it now. Yeah, exactly. But I could, the judge told me, he said, next time you come in here for using that bat, I'm going to give you a, a year in jail. Wow. So you, you, took, you took care of business then? Well, before you could talk to them, you had to get their undivided attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No, that, in the crowd? It's the theater people and stuff. They go to the movies and then they come here afterwards. They uh, hit all the clubs and just jump around. It's a younger crowd downtown, so. Yeah. They don't appreciate the jazz like they used to back in the day. Do they even come for the jazz or do they just come? Well, now it's blues and funk on Friday oh, and Saturday, and so. Yeah, the straight ahead jazz just doesn't keep the people in on, not on weekends. Really? Kind of sad. That's what, this that's is what known, it's known that's what for. That's for, yeah. yeah. Jazz. Since 58, yeah. yeah. And um, someone was telling us that uh, you have the oldest Coors account? Yep. Like yep. I'm the, uh, I got the oldest, uh, those right there are still the original taps. Wow. 
of the cores. Uh, yes, since bar opened, it's been only cores on tap. Wow. Never anything else. I, I understand they come in here, don't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the, the cores, that they have come to the ball game and that they bring their whole family and that come in. Pretty used to get the suite on opening day, of course. Sometimes they come down and get that oh, Still can, does. I do. <laughs> I can go anytime. Right. Call Bill up and they, they bring me a ticket. I, just, I don't go that much. I can't get around. I'm lucky to walk. So since 1933, and so how long did you, were you, you serving at the bar in 33, or did you no. start No, I, I started in 58. Okay. And when did you finally kind of retire? Uh, when I had a stroke. <laughs> I had a heart attack and a stroke. Mm -hmm. when, about six years, seven years ago? Yeah, seven years. Then I just had another one this year. So from 58 to about 2000, Five, you were uh, you were behind the bar. Huh? Yeah. Wow. The whole time. <laughs> yeah. Always working day and night. Yeah. Were you open seven days a week? Or? Yes. Yep. Holy cow. And he was here seven days a week. Yeah. It's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long time. Not if you say it fast. <laughs> 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 and this is the original bar. This is all. Yes. Probably, is this all original? Yes. Yeah. Including the booths? Yep. Were they made, were these made locally? I found a sign that said they're made in, uh, here in Denver, is that right? Yeah, there was uh, a place there on Curtis, uh, or Larmer and 14th, mm -hmm. that used to make them. I think a sign is back there. Yeah, the coolers were made here, I know that. And these are the coolers right yeah. here? Yeah. You're still using them? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Still running great. And all the booths are still mm -hmm. made. Has anything really changed since uh, since you opened the place? Yeah, I don't come down as much. <laughs> <laughs> Finally gets to take it easy. Right, right. And this is the original safe? Yeah. Oh, okay. Do you guys still use it? Sure. It doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere. How'd you get it in there? Uh, with the uh, thing that you pull more uh, motors out of the cars. Oh, the winch, oh, the winches. Because uh, it don't fit through here. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to probably lower it yeah. and set it in. One story that, that, that really stands out in all the time that you were here. Oh, uh, there's probably a million. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the king and queen of uh, Holland came in. They were staying at the Brown Palace and the Brown Palace sent them down here and they were here for a whole week uh, coming in giving people tile that I'd hate to be their porter to carry <laughs> tile and uh, their, uh, their bags were full of tile. Tile. Yeah, like with, with, with their crest on it or something. With the the windmill. Okay. Yeah, that was. I got some of them. I don't know where, but I had them. <laughs> when when yeah, was that? When was that? Oh, probably in the eighty eight, eighty nine. And then Wynton Marsalis came in. Really? He uh, played a concert and came down after the concert. Yes. And word got out that he was here and Place there was packed. no room anywhere. We had to shut the bar down. Wow. Because there was, there was people standing on here, standing on the little flips of the booth. Yeah. It was crazy. <laughs> oh, I bet. Uh, yeah, I got up there. I think he only played one song, didn't he? No, no, no. He played a couple? Yeah. And then snuck out the back door. Right. <laughs> and so this this stage is the original, pretty much the original stage. Well, I built that. Yeah. You built that in, in the fifties or? 
Yeah, that uh, in uh, 80. Oh, 80? 86, 87. Mm -hmm. uh, I made the stage so I could just, uh, get them. They were trying to play, and they, I had a, a pool table here. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't play because they were people trying to shoot pool. Oh, I understand. So I moved that out and put a, uh, the stage where they could uh, get in there and play. And I could take all the pool players in the back uh, mm -hmm. to play them. This, this cafe part, is it, kind of, yeah. is it original also? Yes. Okay. Uh, the, I'd teach them all how to shoot pool. <laughs> if they had a dollar in their pocket, I could play them. <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, uh, my mother-in-law and uh, father-in-law lived upstairs till 52. They bought a place in North Denver mm -hmm. and moved out from upstairs. So do you own the whole building then? Is it upstairs? Yeah. This and then the downstairs. Right? Yeah. What's uh what's upstairs now? Storage. Storage. Just storage and that. And downstairs you just it's it's storage. more storage, yeah. Storage, yeah. storage liquor. liquor. Right. Coolers. Yeah. So does it uh, does it surprise you that this place has become really well known? No. Well, it, uh, it, you can't take the, uh, a fox and uh, turn it into a rabbit. Right, right. A rabbit ear would bring luck. Right. And where are you, where are you from originally? Are you from? I Denver? was born uh, 10 blocks down the street. Really? 1933. Uh, same year the bar got started. Yeah. <laughs> that must be a sign. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so you've lived here all your life? Yep. And this area has changed quite a bit. Oh, every day. Yeah. It changed all the, the hippies and the they'd all start coming in. Ever since they built the the baseball stadium, the whole area has changed a lot. We were pretty much one of the only bars down on market. There was a few on there. Yeah, when yeah. they built that stadium, they tore this street up, but they wouldn't let me put a sidewalk. I had a dirt out here with boards going over the uh, dirt, so people could come in. Right. Would you only close? Would you at least close on holidays? Take holidays off at least? No, I would uh, close on election day. <laughs> <laughs> Just in the daytime, not at night. <laughs> you open at night too. Yeah. Wow. Now Christmas is the only day that he's ever closed. Wow. So besides that, open every day. Wow. Blizzards. No, uh, uh, that big blizzard that we had in '80, '80. He was down here. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't get home. <laughs> <laughs> what was that one? There was one four years ago, um, five years ago, that shut Denver down, shut the airport down and everything. Yeah. Did they stay open through that as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we stood open. And do you get people in here on? Yeah, I had, a, I had them in here. They couldn't get out. They couldn't <laughs> go no place either. <laughs> they were stuck here with us. <laughs> So at least you know they're going to buy from you, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Else yeah. To do. yeah. Well, this is wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Jerry. We really appreciate it. Um, you know, this is a piece of history here. Oh, yeah, definitely. Really yeah. Is. He's put a lot of work into it. Yeah. Yeah, this guy at the end painted the building. He put all that music notes and uh -huh. stuff on it. That's nice. That really is nice. Yeah, he painted that, what, a year ago? Summer. And now you're coming in here all the time? Oh yeah. You've been coming in here? This 
It's good work though, it really looks nice. What's the, uh, I read an article that we found like one article that we could find online that was specifically about this place. Uh -huh. And uh, the guy wrote about um, somebody came in here and had a bit of an issue and you took a sock with a cubo on it. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I've known to do it. Yeah, he yeah, mean. <laughs> I yeah, told you, you can't animal. talk to them before you get their undivided attention. <laughs> what, what do they have to be doing before you take a baseball bat or a cue ball to them? Being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't handle things like that anymore. <laughs> I got my brass over there yet, don't I? Yeah. I got, it went to, from a baseball bat to a piece of brass about this long. Mm -hmm. Looks like roll quarters. That was, uh, uh, jawbreaker. Right. <laughs> so I take it when you were running the bar by yourself, you didn't have any bouncers here. It was just you. you could take just me. When I did, I used to wear glasses and I'd take off my glasses and everybody doing something wrong would run. <laughs> <laughs> because they knew I was going to get them. Right. right. But you have to handle it, right? Yeah. One way or the other. Yeah. No. I, yeah, I, I used to hit him with the baseball bat and it sounded just like a watermelon. Oh, bonk. Bonk. <laughs> <laughs> and then they listened to you after that, right? They'd get out, <laughs> I'd haul them out and put them uh, against the building, call the ambulance to come and get them. Oh, <laughs> then most of them would come back and say that they're sorry. Really? Can they come back in? <laughs> kind of, you know, I'm kind of surprised you never, you never took Kerouac out. Cause he was kind of a bum. I mean, well, the, smelly. And, he yeah. had uh, the uh, first booth there. Yeah, yeah. they'd to come in and sit in there. And they would all. There was about five or six of them. Would dr drink. Do the drugs. They did everything. I'm surprised. I guess they were well behaved. That's why he never told them. Yeah. To do it, huh? I didn't care where they used. Uh, where they get their drugs and all that, they could use them outside. Don't come in here with them. Right. The jazz was always free, wasn't it? Huh? Yes. Wasn't it always the jazz was always free. You always did that yes. free, yeah. Yeah. Now we do a two dollar cover charge, but it's ever since he started the music, it was always no cover. Right. But with the change downtown, there's so many lines and stuff that people want to just come in to use the restroom. Right. So I do a two dollar. If they want to use the restroom, they got to pay two dollars. Two bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, the the regular customers um, have no problems paying that, right? Because they know it keeps all that out of here. So. Well, it's worth it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. No, I'm I'm not bashful. I'll beat the shit out of them in a minute. <laughs> like I say, you got to do what you got to do. You know, yeah. when you got your own place, and especially since you're running it by yourself. Oh, I would, I would get their undivided attention. I understand that Johnny Carson, you were friends with Johnny Carson? Yeah, Johnny was here. Uh-huh. His picture is back over there, uh, me, and, me and Johnny together. Right. I was a guest on his show in 86. Really? No. October of 86. Do you want to talk about the, the, the place he had here? Yeah, well, all of his musicians used to come in here. Really? Uh, all of them uh, would uh, do the show and come here on uh, Thursday and play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then they would go to Vegas to the Four Queens mm -hmm. for Sunday and Monday. So yep. Johnny Carson's band played there. Yeah. On a regular, wow. That was through the 80s, right? Yeah, there, there's uh, Carl Fantana up on top. Uh, Chris Lee Brothers. Pete and Connie Condoli. Uh, So, have any, lately, have anybody, has anybody wanted to play here? Or yeah, play? they want to play here all the time. Yeah? You have but, to turn them down now. Well, I don't bring them in that much. 
because uh, you can't make enough money to pay them. Oh. You know, when you when you pay have to pay them a thousand dollars for three nights, mm -hmm. you got to get a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I would get the, the Red Holloway he, uh, out of Chicago, and uh, he would come in. He He's a joker and brings in a yeah. lot of people. Yeah, he's a lot of fun. Okay. What's the, uh, so you've had people in here from all over the world, haven't yes, you? Yes, yes. From Germany. Uh, you mentioned Holland, the king and queen of Holland. Yeah, the king and queen of Holland. No, they're... I wish I knew all the people that played here. Sure. <laughs> How about you, Angela? Do you have a favorite that's played here? Or? Wynn Marcellus, yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was a teenager when I first started working here, and um, I didn't like the jazz music at all. Really? And went and got up there and played, and I'm like, okay, wait, that sounds good. <laughs> then I started listening to the music, but he's the one that got me listening to the jazz music. Yes, right. So you started working here when you were a teenager? Thirteen. 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 Yeah. Wow. And you're still here. And I'm still here. <laughs> Just working there uh, in the kitchen and sleeping a chair in between the two walls. Mm -hmm. Would you really? Waiting for Dad to get off. Yeah. Right? Well, I was only here Friday and Saturdays. Uh -huh. So. And you close at two? At two. You don't serve till two, but you serve lunch, right? Um. The Mexican food we serve until one in the morning. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Anything else? Um, uh, is that book in there, honey? I can look at the book and you come up with more no things. Oh, this no. Is, this is fine. You, you. Given us a lot. I yeah, really appreciate it. When uh, Chet Baker was playing, mm -hmm. the, uh, he was uh, up there singing, and the guy walked by with a brick and throwed it through the window. And they called me Twinkle Toes, went over the bar without touching a soul. <laughs> really? I caught him out here by the railroad tracks on the way to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's been so many, so many different uh, things in there. The bartender, uh, the, the work, uh, the doorman, mm -hmm. and I found uh, he was a, a, track, a track star for CU. I got him back in shape. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to run and keep up with me. <laughs> Kelvin? Yeah. Grant, these walls can talk. A lot of history, definitely. A lot of history. Yeah. This is probably my favorite place I've come so far. It really is. This is this has been my favorite favorite place. Well, thank you. Yeah, you're absolutely. You're, you're welcome. This is really really cool. Yeah, this is this yeah, is. I'm glad I got him up. In eighty, <laughs> in eighty, this was picked one of the top one hundred bars uh, in, the in the world. Wow. Good. I don't know if it was because I was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> that just been it. Personality, yeah, right? <laughs> definitely. Yeah, let me go get a cigarette over there. Okay. I think we're. Yeah, we're done.